This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and welcome back. I am Pastor A.D., Pastor of Truvine, MBC, and welcome to our Pastor's Moment. And happy Friday. I'm so elated that it's Friday and the weekend is here. And I thank God and I am able to encourage you one more time. And I want to talk to you today about forgiveness, about forgiveness. Um, you must have forgiveness in your heart, no matter how cruel, um, how... Um, badly a person have treated you, you must have forgiveness in your heart. And I want to talk to you about having forgiveness and how God has forgiven us. And so I want to talk about that um, and encourage you to forgive others while you can, while you still have a chance, while breath still, uh, still lies in your body. Please forgive others. Please, please, while you have a chance. Um, and so I'm going to read a few scriptures. And the first scripture I come to is Psalm, the book of Psalm. Um, book 32, verse 5, and it reads, I acknowledge my sin to you and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. So we have to learn how to acknowledge the sin that's in our, in our lives to God daily when repenting. David picks up the key terms um, that he had used to describe sin in verse 1 and 2. Uh, but although God can see everything, see every heart, David offered himself to God like an open book when it came to his life, especially when dealing with sin. And so we should do the same. As David leads by example, we should do the same by offering God our lives as a daily book, just opening our lives and telling God about our sins, our transgressions, our trespasses, what we have done against him, and, um, and really talk to him about... Um, our sins, how, uh, what we need help with, and, and everything. Just acknowledge those things. Acknowledge your problems. Acknowledge your addictions. Acknowledge what's going on in your life, your appetites. That's what I like to call them. But acknowledge those things. Don't be afraid. Talk to God and tell God what's going on in your life and, re and repent daily. We should be repenting daily. Um, the second one is Psalm 86 and 5. Psalm 86, 5. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. So God is continuously ready to forgive, but he is waiting for us to repent, which every believer should have a repentant heart. And the good news is that God has an abundant of mercy uh, for those who call upon his name. So God has a tremendous abundance of mercy every time we call upon his name. And I love calling on God's name. I love serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's a sovereign God, and he's so merciful. Oh, my God, God is merciful. He's a God of many chances. Trust me, I've tried him. He's a God of many chances, not just second chances. He's a God of many chances, and um, he's a very forgiving God. So why not repent and, and, and um, let God know your sin um, that you are committing? Um, and then the next one is coming from Micah, the book of Micah, 7, 18, chapter 7, verse 18. Who is God like you? Who is a God like you? Pardoning, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression and the, of the remnant of his heritage. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. In response to the gracious, forgiving character displayed toward Israel by their master, the repentant remnant of people extolled his um, incomparable grace and mercy. Micah began this final section with a play on words involving his name. Who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord? Y'all know this song? Who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord? Who is the same meaning of Micah's name? That's the same meaning of Micah's name. That's what Micah's name means. Who is like the Lord? Uh, if God pardoned sin in the Old Testament, which was actually living off the law and by the law, just think how much he pardons our sin today, now that we're living in and on by grace, okay? And when he looks at his church, he is chosen. He sees us as righteous. I want to say that again. When God looked at, his, at the church, at us, the believers, he sees us as righteous, why? Because of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose for us. So it was nobody but Jesus. And I want you to say that nobody but Jesus. It was nobody but Jesus that brought you out. It was nobody 
but Jesus that turned your life around. It was nobody but Jesus that's, that had a, that has washed you white as snow. It was nobody but Jesus who has forgiven your sin, paid the total penalty on the cross for your sin. He's the ultimate sacrifice. Matthew 6 and 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. So as believers, we must forgive our enemies, those who treat us with cruelty or have mistreated us in any kind of way, not saying to remain friends or to converse with them, but we must forgive in order for us to be forgiven by God. And sometimes you must love from a distance because some people are hard to love, but we must love them regardless of the fact um, you don't have to like their ways, but you must love them because that's what Jesus was about. Love, forgiveness. He was about that. And so um, as Jesus exemplified um, love and forgiveness, we also must exemplify the same thing. So sometimes you must love a person from a distance because some people you just can't get along with. So you must love them from a distance, love them from a distance. Um, Acts 3 and 19, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So Apostle Peter is preaching repentance in a conversion to Christ. And he's preaching about the millennial kingdom that will come in some time, era or season. And the only people who will be in the kingdom will be his chosen, of course, the church and the chosen Jews who believe that Jesus is their Lord and Savior. The period will be marked by all kinds of blessings and renewals. So that's amazing to, to know that one day we will be in his kingdom. Um, and so we must forgive in order to be in his kingdom. You cannot go around with having unforgiveness in your heart and call yourself a Christian. That cannot happen. And we'll talk a little bit, little bit about that in a little bit. Um, Ephesians 1 and 7. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. The term used to, uh, to hear relates to paying the required ransom to God for the release of a person from bondage. Christ's sacrifice on the cross paid that price for every elect person enslaved by sin, buying them out of slave from the market of iniquity. The price of redemption was death. OK, Jesus subjugated and annihilated all of our sins on the cross and he rose, which gave us newness of life. So when Jesus died on the cross, all of our sins was washed away. Every sin um, from uh, from um, his death on the cross from to the future, every sin before him, it was it was nailed on the cross. It was left there. It's gone. It's annihilated. It was subjugated. And now we have the news, newness of life because it didn't stop on the cross. Jesus got up with all power in heaven and earth. And that's an awesome thing. And he said, I'm going to pre prepare a place for you. And uh, where he go, we also may be. So, and, uh, and so I'm excited to know that. I'm excited to serve a God like this. He's amazing. He's the, he's the only God. And he's, he's so, so, so amazing. Ephesians 4.32 and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So those who have been forgiven uh, so much by God should, uh, should of all people, forgive the relative, uh, relatively small offensive offenses against them by others. Um, so forgive others. I mean, it's just small offenses. People, uh, sometimes people don't mean any harm. And uh, maybe it just came out the wrong way or whatever. But forgive them. Forgive them. Again, it doesn't mean you got to be all in their face every time you see them, but forgive them. People who comes against you, whether small or great offenses, um, if in Christ, once they repent for their off offenses, it is forever removed. While you are still mad, upset, and angry with them, uh, they have been forgiven. They already asked for forgiveness, but you're still upset. You're stressed out. Um, over silliness. So they have already repented for their trespasses against you and have moved on with their lives. While you are letting their um, their offenses, their misdeeds, their, their mistreatment hinder you, hinder your life by stressing you out and keeping you upset. 
Let it go. It is over. I want you to say that in your mind. Let it go. It is over. Let it go. Let it go. Whatever happened to you in your past, whether you've been abused, whatever happened, let it go. It's over. It's over. Stop holding on to certain things. It's over. Let it go. It's time to move on. Forgive and move on. Colossians 3 and 13. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against one another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Because Christ, as the model of forgiveness, has forgiven all of our sins totally. Uh, believers must be willing to forgive others. If there is no forgiveness in your heart for others, your, li your living is in vain. Let me say that again. If there's no forgiveness in your heart for others, your living is in vain. You call it, you're calling yourself a believer in Christ is in vain that you shouldn't do that we must learn forgiveness like christ strongly exemplified in his daily living and in his death if we don't have forgiveness then our christian lives is a complete oxymoron okay it's a con contradiction if we don't have forgiveness in our hearts now that, that christ was about forgiving and so we should be the same way. We should feel the same way. We should walk. Because why? Because Christ lives in us. The Holy Ghost lives in us. God lives in us. And so those three in one lives in us. And so uh, we should have the same uh, outlook. We should have the same kind of heart and integrity to forgive others. Forgive others. Um, though they have offended us, forgive them. Forgive them and move on with your life. Hebrews 8 and 12, our last one. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. So I thank God every day that I serve a merciful God, a God who doesn't look at my faults, but who sees me as righteous. He, hey, God, a God who doesn't talk about me, uh, talk down about me, demean me um, about my mishaps, my mess ups, my hiccups, but he loves me. And he forgives me for all of my sins. And that's amazing to serve a God like that. It's like I once was, a, I'll give you an example, it's like a person once was a criminal who committed so many crimes. And, 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 when, I, and when a person entered into court and, uh, and was pardoned for every wrongdoing, doing, every uh, burglary, every misdeed, every lie, every sin, they were pardoned. Even for murder, they were pardoned. And that's how Jesus has, um, has really... That's how it happened in our life. That's, that's what has taken place in our life. Jesus went on the cross, the ultimate, the ultimate punishment, the ultimate sacrifice. He died for our sins. And so he has paid the total price for us. He has bought us back, bought, bought us out of slavery. So we are no longer slaves. Uh, we are now free. We are free. And so who wouldn't serve a God like this? I don't know about you. But I serve a God. I serve this God, this God. He loves me so. And he, and he loves me so that he died for my sins. And he got up with all power in heaven. And I thank God for him removing those sins. And he doesn't, he doesn't look at my faults. He doesn't look at my faults like that. He doesn't like people do. People, that's all people, people love to see your faults. They love to see, um, they love to see you falter. They love to see you, you fall um, and fail in life. But I'm telling you, God loves us so that he loves his chosen and he has chosen us and he sees us as righteous because of his darling son, Jesus Christ. And um, I thank God for his tender mercies and his loving kindness for sending us his darling son to die on the cross and to rise for our sins. Isn't that amazing, people, um, to know that God forgives us? So why not forgive others? Forgive others. Have it in your heart to forgive others. Yeah your family members, whoever it is, forgive them, forgive them and move on with your life. Forgive them and move on and um, God will forgive you. So please have that forgiveness in your heart um, and know uh, that God loves you and, and know that um, to be a believer in Christ, in order to be a believer in Christ, you must have forgiveness in your heart, that type of love, that type of compassion um, in your heart to forgive others no matter how badly they treated you. Um, so I thank you for joining us once again. I pray that you're encouraged by the word of God. And remember, keep forgiveness on your mind. Keep it on your mind at all times. I love you. And please join us again Sunday morning uh, where there will be a word from the Lord. God bless you. God bless everyone. Thank you for your support. 
and True Vine, we are the Church of Love. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to this channel to join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.